Praise the Lord.
the glory and the honor and the praise. The Bible says that this is the day. That's enough to give God the glory right there. Anybody excited to see another day? Anybody excited that you woke up to grace and mercy because you know how you used to act? In fact, you know how you acted yesterday. And so you're just glad that God has so fit to bless you on this day. Anybody excited to be in worship? Anybody online excited to go before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? I was glad when they said, let us. That's a contract. Let's go into the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within thy gates. And oh, we invite you and welcome you to the city of David as we worship God in spirit and in truth. We ask you to go ahead and share the page. God has a blessing with your name on it. Anybody receive that? God has a blessing this morning with your name on it. And you shall receive the very thing that you came into the presence of God needing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we say thank you on this morning. We praise you and we give you glory. God, while the dew is still yet on the grass, we thought of it not a robbery to press our way into the sanctuary. God, just to declare who you are. And so before we ask you for anything, God, we just want to say thank you for being God. Thank you for being a healer this week. Thank you for being a deliverer this week. Thank you for being a mind regulator this week. Thank you for being a heavy load carrier this week. Thank you, God, for being a blesser this week. God, thank you, God, for being a therapist this week. God, thank you for being food on our table, clothes on our back, running oxygen in our lungs and blood in our veins. God, we say thank you this morning that we have woke up, God, with the faculties of our own mind, God, in the right mindset to give you the glory and the honor and the praise that is due you. And so, God, we believe by faith that this will be a worship encounter like no other, God, because this is a day that we've never seen. God, we declare our worship today will be unlike we've never experienced before. And so we give you glory this morning. We magnify you this morning. God, I selfishly ask that you bless my brother, that you bless my sister. God, lift up a bow down head amongst us. God, encourage the discouraged right now. God, send an affirming word, a confirming word. God, send an answer to somebody's prayer. God, that's been keeping them up late night. God, has been waking them up early in the morning. God, we know you speak early in the morning. And so, God, we ask right now, God, that you would send your word. God, send your Holy Spirit, God, that will give new life. God, we praise you right now. God, Zion has come in a mindset and in a mode to worship you, God, to give you glory, God, to chase out the devil. God, we pray right now that we have done something that is pleasing in your sight, God, that you might find this worship acceptable, God, that you might find this worship worthy of yourself to reveal yourself to the believers that have gathered to lift up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so we praise you in advance, God, we give you glory in advance, we magnify you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on and bless. put your blessed hands together and praise the only God that we know. If you don't mind turning your Bibles with me to Psalm, the very first Psalm, Psalm 1. Amen. Amen. That is the book before Proverbs and the book after Job. Would you turn your Bibles to Psalm 1? It is a, it is a most familiar passage of scripture. I am reading from the NIV version. Amen. 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 Praise God. The word of God says, blessed is the one, blessed is translated happy, y'all. Happy is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prosper. Somebody needs to hear that. Whatever they do prosper, not so the wicked. They are left like shaft that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. May God always bless his people. You may be seated in the presence of God. Come on, city. Let's worship God in spirit and in truth. Wayne Anthony, and the 
original James Cleveland singer who has agreed to come and minister some of those Cleveland songs that we've all grown to love that have brought us over. Reverend Anthony, we welcome you.
shall obey thy will. what God is doing here at the city. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Last week, we did not have the information, but we want to celebrate the fact that on last Tuesday was one of our newest members, Sister Kelly Davis. It was her birthday, and so we want to wish her a wonderful year and pray God's blessings upon her life. And then this week on the 21st, 
is Sister Melissa Westfield's birthday. And so we want to wish her a wonderful birthday. And then on the 22nd is Dewan Marco. We want to wish him a happy birthday. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And on the 17th, which I believe is tomorrow, uh, Dr. Crystal and Brother Kevin Shirley are celebrating their wedding anniversary. And so we pray God's blessings. The city of David, we celebrate covenant unions here. And so we pray God's blessings upon that union. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to thank all of you who stepped out of your, outside of yourselves to be servants on yesterday. On yesterday, we gave out over 175 odd bags of food yeah. in, the, in the West Mount community on yesterday. And I want you to know that it was a blessing. We even, even though we didn't give it for this reason, but when you Amen. take care of God's business, he has a way of taking care of your business. And some people pulled up not to even grab groceries. Some people pulled up to give us an offering. Amen. Because they understood the spirit of God was in that place and they wanted to be a part of it. See, when God is moving, you ought, you ought to sow into that situation. That the situation may also, y'all don't hear me, bless your life. And so we praise everybody who came out and helped. We still, because I, I know some of us, I ain't going to call it CP time because everybody sometimes procrastinate. But some of us uh, have an opportunity to even receive another blessing because we have some bags left over. And these are some great produce. It's not that stuff that you'll never eat. I mean, somebody can need some potatoes. Man, anybody eat squash? Y'all got Taco Tuesday coming up. Y'all need lettuce? Amen. Amen. Somebody, somebody that know how to make potato salad needs some celery. You trust everybody on, potato salad. Nah, God. You better not. <laughs> Facts. Amen. But we got the potatoes. We got the celery. We got squash. We got potatoes all for you. And so if you would just come to Bible study. In fact, let us know by email. We'll have it ready for you on um, Tuesday at Bible study. But now that's your part to email us that we might have it for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The daughters of Naomi and Ruth are having an afternoon tea today. Amen. And so they want all of the women to wear your best hat and join them after service at 10 a.m. Check with the ministry leaders and social media platforms for uh, correct uh, meeting details. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And because I'm feeling good this morning, I am going to reward the best hat. Amen. Whoever you all vote for, women. And whoever has the best hat, please send me the picture. And you know what? I'm going to get them a gift certificate for Spagatini so they can roll with your knee. I'm going to get them out the hood. I'm going to get them farther than Pico and LaBrev. <laughs> I'm going to send somebody to Spagatini. Now send me the picture. Now you got to be wearing the hat. I want you to look like Huggy Bear and I'm going to get you something. I want you to be wearing the hat. Don't, if you're not tilting the hat, I don't want the picture. Amen. But if you are tilting the hat and wearing the hat, I want you to send me the picture and you're going to go with your knee and the spagatinis on pastor. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. This is the last week for our grad forms. I'm going to say it again. The due date is May 22nd. We want you to fill out that and turn it in by May 22nd, which is next Saturday, if you want to be a participant in Achievement Sunday. Achievement Sunday is the Sunday in which we uh, celebrate all graduates of any level, of any vocational school or technical school. We just want to celebrate how God has elevated and called for some of us to be promoted. And so this is the deadline on the next Saturday. And we are celebrating the second Sunday in June. We have a guest speaker. He was starred in the Netflix series Last Chance You, Coach John Mosley of East Los Angeles College and of Washington Preparatory High School is coming in order to give a word. Amen? Amen. We're still asking for volunteers as we get ready to re-enter the sanctuary, both for Tuesday and for Sunday worship. If you would please, please, please email the church so that we can let you know how it is that we are going to re-enter the sanctuary and be safe. Next Sunday is Family and Friends Day. We ask that you invite your loved ones to uh, visit with us online in our virtual worship that they may receive a blessing from God. That is all of my announcements. I ask that you press your way and begin to type the name of, on, uh, on the screen that you want us to lift up in prayer. We are still lifting up the Gaines family and the Martin family and the Bennett family and the Rogers family 
and the Benefield family and the Roseboro family and the Ellis family and Eureka Young and her family. We're still lifting up the DeRoe family and the Monroe family. We're still lifting up Jeff Robinson. We're still lifting up Sister Arlene Scott and Taylor Dasher. We're still lifting up uh, Brother Andrew Ironman. We're still lifting up Mother Alma Thomas and Brother Ray May and Al Johnson and Carolyn Johnson Willis. Sister Lily Robinson, we're lifting up. Baby Elijah, we're still lifting up. Cousin Robin Bell, Stephanie Macklin, John County, Walker Posey Jr., Don Posey, Cyrus Johnson, the, the McCray family, Brother Richard Griffin, Brother Sammy Davis, Sister Wanda Anderson, Akia Anderson, Nate Robinson, Augustus Briscoe, Bootsy Briscoe, Veronica Hayes, and Sister Imani Hayes. I'm still lifting up the vaccine. Those who have contemplated taking the vaccine, those who are thinking about it, praying about it, we're lifting up the educators, the nurses, the doctors, law enforcement, essential workers, our elders, our, our babies, our children. Come on, pray, church. David says, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold of the beauty of the Lord, to inquire of him in his temple. I would have given up, y'all, unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Sister Karen Evans, I'm calling your name this morning. Hallelujah. Deliverance will come out. Favor 
will come out. And so we got to ask that you rain down on us your spirit, God. Your spirit that will break forth new ground, God. Your spirit that will pull us up out of the valleys, God. Your spirit that will touch us in a hospital room. Your spirit that will move in a home homeless encampment. Your spirit that will move in a jail cell. Your spirit that will move in a courtroom. Your spirit that will move in a boardroom. Your spirit that will move in a pew. Your spirit that will move in a bed. We thank you right now, God. We give you glory right now, God. We praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we offer this prayer. Amen. Would you just put your best hands together and give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Hallelujah. Missionary offering, we ask that you be obedient to the spirit that God is leading you. And when we take up the tithes and the offering, that you would lead whatever you desire for us to continue to do in reach and outreach. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that yesterday was a pretty hard day, but the, that's not the reason that I am not bringing forth the word. I have to go immediately after uh, we give the benediction here to go be with my spiritual father and mother in ministry, Bishop Johnny Young in Miracle Temple, as they celebrate their pastor appreciation. I am giving forth the word, and so I wanted the city to be fed. I cannot go and bless others and neglect home. Right. And so I knew we needed to be fed, so I brought the man of God back into this house. I'm not going to give you no long introduction. He's already been in this house. And I told you then that that would not be the last time. And so after this wonderful music ministry has led us in worship, the next voice you will hear will be that of Pastor Christopher Grundy. Praise God. Praise God. Stretch forth your right hand toward the screen. Let's encourage him on this morning. Say a word, Pastor Chris. Say a word. Preach, black man. Preach. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And praise God.
Father, we thank you because you are our all in all. Despite what it is that we're dealing with, what we're struggling with, if you know that God is your all in all, go on and clap your hands and give God praise in this place. You watching and viewing online. If you know that God is your all in all, we give God all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank him for who he is and for what he has done. If God has been good to you, you ought to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Oh, come on, you watching on mind, you in the sanctuary. You ought to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The songwriter declared, I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. But all of my good days outweigh my bad days. And for this, I say thank you, Lord. I will not complain. Have he been faithful to you? If he's been faithful to you, you ought to let the redeemer of the Lord say so. God is my all in all. Grandmama taught me whatever in my life thou hast taught me to say. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. I don't know how you feel about it, but it is well with my soul. It is well. All is well. All is well. I want to drop that in your spirit on this morning. All is well. I know you had a rough week, but all is well. I know everything isn't aligning up to how you would like it to be, but all is well. Whatever my life thou has taught me to say, it is well with my soul. It is well. We thank God. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We magnify you. We thank you for all that has taken place thus far. Now, God, we continuously pray for your anointing, your power, and your spirit. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. Heal, deliver, save, set the captives free in this place. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way Move God. self out of the way that you may have your way. It is for this that we give you all the glory. Hallelujah. For this we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you know you have the victory, come on and clap your hands one more time. And give God the praise in this place. Amen. To you, my brothers and sisters, we greet you with Jesus' joy and the grace of our Lord and the peace of our blessed Savior. Amen. To my brother, my friend, Pastor D'Amico, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you. Come on, clap it up. Let's celebrate the leader of this house. Amen. To all of you on this morning, the city of David, to uh, Uncle. Uh, yes, sir. We got, we bless you. We thank, I'm no stranger to his ministry. He uh, taught my father some things and grew up singing uh, with my father, grew up singing with him. Amen. And playing with him the late Dr. Ricky Renee Grundy. And so let's praise God for this man of God on this morning. Um, this jewel that we have uh, among us. We thank God for you. We won't be long before you, but we will be strong. I want to call your attention this morning to a familiar passage of scripture. Uh, but we thank God for revelation. Job chapter one. Job chapter one. Job chapter one. Job. Chapter one. Job chapter one going to look at verse number one but then I want to drop down to verses 20 through 22 Job chapter one beginning at verse number one and then we'll scatter down to verses 20 through 22 amen if we're going to stand let's stand together for the reading of the word the Bible says there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. The Bible says in verse number 20, then Job arose. 
tore his robe and shaved his head. Mm -hmm. And he fell to the ground and worshipped. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb. And naked shall I return there. Here's the part here. The Lord gave. Ah, the Lord gave. And the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, they were asking me about my title for this message. Listen, you've got to apply it as we go. Uh, uh, the Lord didn't give me no deep title, but it's more so about what is getting ready to be brought out of the text. Uh, the message in the words of uh, they quote in the words of Furious Five and Grandmaster Flash. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know about that. It says it's like a jungle sometimes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it makes me wonder how I keep from going under. Uh, uh, don't push me. Yeah, yeah. Don't. Life is like that sometimes. Don't, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. Yeah, yeah. Life, life gets like that sometimes, and I'm trying not to lose. My head, <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't push me, yeah, yeah, because I'm close to the edge and I'm trying, dealing with life is so much going on, I'm trying not to lose my edge. And here we find in the land of us, uh, a land that is unknown, uh, unfamiliar. The exact location of the land is unknown. We find a man named Job here living prosperously in this unknown land. Here he was a wealthy man. Here he was a prosperous man, but I got stuck here and I've read this passage many times again and I was doing my research and my study and I, and I wanted to really find out more about this land of us. And really, if you discover, Pastor, it is noted that they really are uncertain about where this place is located. Have you ever found yourself living in an unfamiliar place? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Living in a strange territory. I want to deal with that for a moment. Yes, uh, dealing with a time and a season in your life that seemed very uncomfortable, very uncertain, but you knew you were supposed to be there. And here is Job. He is prosperous. He is wealthy. He does not want for anything. Yes, but only to discover that he had a purpose throughout living in this land. Here it is. We find ourselves sometime in uncomfortable and unsure predicaments. And it's not so much that things are going wrong, but yet things start off one way. And what happens when things start off one way, but then go another route? Yes, sir. Let's deal with the unknown here. Jeremiah, many times throughout the Bible, many were called to operate in unknown and uncertain places. Jeremiah called to lead the people back to God, although he knew they would not listen. Moses called to lead the people out of Egypt, although he knew he would have a time getting them there. David constantly fighting battles due to the call and purpose 
on his life. Naaman, a successful Syrian who had leprosy, but yet turned back to God and turned to the prophet for his healing. Josiah, a reigning king since eight, he did right in the eyes of the Lord, but still trouble found him. And he was able to be the one to stand in between God's judgment and Israel. Paul, on several occasions, suffered for the sake of righteousness and spreading the gospel. Jesus himself pleads with the Lord to let this cup pass from me while he was journeying through unfamiliar territory only to discover it was the place for him to be in. And here it is in Job chapter 1 we discover that Job here he and his children living in this unfamiliar territory separated from everybody uh, uh, put off from everybody and here he is a man of faith yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. a man of righteousness, a, a man of hope. The Bible says that Job feared God and turned away from evil. Here, this this book, that this writing, this poetic writing of Job is found one to be one of wisdom, but yet teaches us about that good, that bad things happen to good people. That no matter where you are in your life, no matter what you possess in your life, that your faith. Yes, sir. Must not be predicated on what you have, but the God of who has supplied you with everything that you have. Your faith is not attached to stuff, but it's attached to the God that opened the door for you to get the stuff. Y'all don't hear me today. And so you're living in this unknown place. And right now, uh, it's 2021, and we have made it through. We're making it through. We're navigating through an unknown through your time and season in all of our lives. We are navigating unemployment. We're, we're navigating through this uh, marriage on the rocks. We're navigating through this. We're navigating through up and down relationships. We're navigating through this ministry. You're navigating through this a place that you have never entered into. And so here Job, a man of faith, the Bible equates him to be, he resembled the faith of Abraham. And you all know what happened to Abraham. The Bible says that God told Abraham to get out of his country and go elsewhere. What happens when you obey God and step out into purpose? And all hell breaks loose. What happens when you obey God and yet your reality doesn't align with what God has promised you? My God, today, what happens? You watching online when you obey God, but yet everything seems it starts off one way, but everything starts going wrong. And so here, 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 here it is. All hell begins to break loose in the Bible also study shows us that spiritual warfare begin to break out because here we understand that the Bible teaches us here in the text he says now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them and the Lord said to Satan from where do you come the devil is like a roaring lion she Seeking whom he may devour. And no matter the riches that you have, no matter the education that you have obtained, trouble has a way of finding your address. 
of finding your address. Trouble has a way of finding you and putting you in uncomfortable and unfamiliar situations. But I've come to you on this morning. Jesus promised us that in this life you will have a tribulation. In this life you will have troubles. In this life you will go through things. But thank God I have already prayed for you that your faith fail not. And I've just come on assignment on this morning briefly to let you know that you're in a season. It's unfamiliar, but you gotta hold on to your faith. Yeah, you haven't been in this place before, but you gotta hold on to your faith. You haven't faced this before, but you gotta hold on to your faith. You haven't dealt with nothing like this before, but you got to hold on to your faith. And you got to make sure that your faith is not built on what God gives you, but your faith is built on simply who he is. Because situations will change. Storms will arise. But the Bible says that God changes not. I am the God that changes not. And if he said it, he surely going to bring it to pass. If God brought you to it, he's going to bring you through it. If God told you to step out, he's going to make it happen. If God told you to do a thing, he's going to make sure that you have what you need. Somebody bless the Lord in here. So here the enemy does his job as usual. It is the job of the enemy to confront us with life and its circumstances and to tempt us uh, and to try and get us off course. But it is our responsibility as a believer to hold true to the word of God and what God has already said about the situation. Because truth be told, you already got the word on the matter. No, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Already. I'll say that again. You already got the word concerning the matter. You watching online, zoom in. You got the word concerning the matter. God already spoke it to you. You just got to trust him to bring it to pass. And I don't know where you are in your life right now. You're in an unfamiliar place. It's uncomfortable. You don't like it here. You don't understand everything that's going on. On, huh? But you got to hold on to the word huh? concerning your life. Huh? If God promised you to it, huh? he's surely going to make sure that it comes to pass. Huh? I know you're dealing with affliction. You're dealing with hardness. You're dealing with sickness. You got pain in your body. Huh? You got decisions you got to make. Huh? But God is not a man that he should lie. Huh? No, is he the son of man that he should repent. If God said it and spoke his word huh? over your life he shall bring it to pass what you got to understand is a few things in the text that I'm going to lift and get on out your way uh, the Bible here watch the story here you familiar with the story yes sir the Bible says that Job here here the devil comes along and he approaches he approaches God he approaches the spirit of God here and he he begins to talk with God and, and God lets him know have you considered uh, my servant Job, have, have you considered my my servant Job? Have you considered uh, uh, that there is none like Job on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? And and, and so Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? In other words, it, it, uh, there's got to be something uh, uh, that he's afraid about. There's got to be something uh, that makes him nervous. There's got to be something uh, that I can do uh, that can get him off course. Uh, and see, many of you are frustrated uh, uh, with where you are in life and the things and the tests uh, that God has allowed to take place in your life. Uh, not understanding that you've been already born and impregnated with purpose uh, and that's why God uh, won't let you give up and so the first thing we discover here uh, is that God notice he did not consult with Job uh, and ask him 
was it okay if you go through this uh, but he deals with the enemy uh, because God already knew what he had been put in Job uh, when God knows what he has already put into you uh, he doesn't have to consult with you because he's already purposed you to make it uh, and so the first thing we discover is uh, is that there is purpose in your uncomfortable place uh, yeah 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 there is purpose uh, in your uncomfortable place uh, and you just got to stand still long enough uh, to find out your purpose in it uh, and so the bible says uh, and the lord said to satan behold uh, all that he has is in your power uh, but you can't touch his soul uh, and i've come to let somebody know up in here uh, that the devil may have touched your stuff uh, he may have touched your family uh, he may be wrecking hell on your job uh, he may be wrecking hell in your home uh, but one thing he cannot touch uh, he cannot touch your soul uh, no matter what it looks like uh, the god has already told him uh, that their soul belongs to me uh, their life belongs to me uh, so you can have the car you can have the house you can have the money uh, but their soul uh, that belongs to me uh, the devil comes to steal kill and destroy uh, but i come that you might have life uh, and have it more abundantly somebody clap your hands for the word yes, sir. And, and, and see, the enemy doesn't bother anybody that does not have purpose. Not. Yeah, because when there's purpose on your life, yeah. he understands the magnitude of who you are in the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if your purpose is fulfilled, he understands how that is going to shake up things in the kingdom. And so many of us, we're, 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 we're always fussing and we're always wondering, well, God, why me? Why me? Well, why not you? You've been purposed for this. He told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the belly of your mother's womb, I called you and anointed you for a time of such as I called you. And you've been anointed. Somebody shout, I've been anointed for this. Yeah, I've been purposed for this. But not only do we find purpose, but we find that Job was positioned. He was positioned in his faith. Purpose is connected to position. When you understand your purpose, you don't lose your position on the matter. And so that's why after all Job was dealing with, the Bible says he begins to be attacked. While he was yet speaking, one thing after another began to happen in his life. While he was yet speaking, the winds and the waves came in and began to tear up his house while he was yet speaking. They began to attack his family. They began to attack his land. They began to attack everything he had. And we discovered here that storms don't just come one by one, but they come in sets. They come in teams. So when you get one thing dealt with, here comes another one. You deal with your job and here comes uh, something with your car. You deal with your car uh, and then here comes something with your marriage. Uh, you get your marriage together. Uh, then ministry is on the rocks. Then your kids acting crazy. Uh, then you got health conditions. Uh, then we in a full blown pandemic. Uh, you thought it was going to be different. Uh, and how did we end up here? Uh, but God already knew. Oh God, he already knew uh, that we had purpose uh, in all of this and he has positioned us. Uh, and that's why it's important that you stay in position. Uh, uh, somebody shall stay in position. Yeah, yeah, you cannot be moved uh, uh, by what is going on in your life. The Bible says in Joel chapter 2 that uh, after these things, we also along with these things, not only did, did his land was lost and his children were lost, but the Bible says uh, that he pain began to inflict his body. Uh, that he had boils all over him. And if you know anything about boils, amen, it's nothing nice. Amen. And so the enemy was going after his soul. He was going after his faith. He was going after his 
mind because the enemy understands if he can attack your faith he can attack your mind and if he can attack your mind he'll attack your spirit and that's why the Bible encourages us even in the midst of this time that we're living in I told you that we're in the midst of spiritual warfare and that's why you got to continuously position yourself you got to pray without ceasing you got to continue to fast you you got to continue to remain steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your labor is not in vain understand that God doesn't consult who he has already prepared ah my God he's already prepared you for this somebody shout I've been prepared for this yeah 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 and his reality did not negate his faith Job's reality did not allow him to lose his faith somebody clap your hands for the word of God but then not only do we see purpose not only do we see position but with position comes posture oh my God today yeah 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 with, with position comes posture. It's not enough to be in position, uh, Pastor, if you're not going to be in the right posture. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, see, see, many have titles. Oh, my God, today. Many, many of you are serving. Many of you, yeah, you confess that you love the Lord. But every time something comes, your posture changes. Oh, my God, my God, my God. You, you. Church for many years, but every time a wind blows your way, uh, uh, your your response changes. Uh, your 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 posture is one thing today. That's why it's easy for some people uh, to worship Him today, but tomorrow, if they get the wrong call, if they get the wrong text, uh, it'll mess them up. But you was just up in here uh, giving God all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Uh, you got to make sure that even in this season. Uh, that your posture remains the same. Here it is. The challenge here, my God, the challenge once you're in position is your posture. It doesn't make sense for you to be in proper placement, but your posture doesn't match your position. Come here, sports fanatics. It's nothing. It doesn't make sense for you to be on the front line if you're not going to be in the proper posture. If you're not going to protect the goal at hand. Come here. Come here. If you're not going to protect the basket, it's no need for me to have you in their position. And every time the opponent comes in to try and score, your hands don't go up, but instead you're looking crazy because you're thrown off by everything else going on around you. But when you are postured and positioned in God, you set your face like a flint and you say, come what may from day to day. The wind may blow and the breakers may dash but I'm not going to worry right through here because the Lord already gave me the word on the matter somebody said I've already got the word on the matter yeah, yeah, I've got the word on the matter well what does the word say he says nay in all these things we are more than conquerors the Bible says in verse number 20 then Job arose Tore his robe and shaved his head. My God. Yes, but the text says he fell to the ground and worshiped. My God, today he fell to the ground and he worshiped. His posture never changed despite his reality. Now here's the thing here. Well, Pastor Chris, am I supposed to deal with it? Deal with the reality of what I'm going through? Yes. Because as humans and not 100% spirit like Jesus and 100% man like Jesus himself, we have feelings. We're human. So he says deal with it, but don't stay there. Deal with it. But don't stay there. The Bible says that Job arose and tore his robe. He, he, he felt some type of way. 
But he knew, my God. But he knew. He knew what he knew. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Somebody shout, I know what I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I wish I had some folk in here uh, that you've been walking with God for so long that you know what you know. <laughs> oh my God! I, I'll say it again. You watch it online. You what you've seen? God healed and delivered. You've seen God make a way out of nowhere. You you already got God's word concerning the matter. And because you know what you know, uh, they taught me a song many years ago. Thank you. That said, I don't believe He brought me this far to leave me now. Job already had God's word concerning the matter. Even in the midst of his frustration. Even in the midst of his circumstance. The Bible says that Job tore his mantle and he shaved his head. Even in the midst of life's trials, ups and downs. Job never lost his posture. And he never lost his position on the matter. And that's why your faith cannot be in what you have. But your faith has to be in the God that you serve. Because no matter what happens in life, the storms are going to come. The winds are going to blow. Oh my God today. But I hear in my spirit, I don't believe. He brought me this far to leave me here. I know it's rough right now. You're trying to figure out some things. You're trying to figure out life and how which way that you're going. Many folk have been questioning me. I recently made some moves concerning my life and I have to make some changes. Everybody's been questioning. What's going on with you? Where you at now? How are things going? What is it looking like? When is this going to happen? How you don't figure this out? And my response is, God has already given me the word concerning the matter. When you obey God, God has already went before you. But he never tells you of which is going to happen. But you got to stay positioned. You got to stay planted. And you got to keep your posture. And I got one question for you. What's your posture in this season of life's ups and downs? What's your posture when the winds are blowing and the breakers are dashing? What's your posture when I
your response change. Don't let your confession be predicated on your reality. He that has begun a good work shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Open up your mouth and just give him praise.
at the very same time, he was making the transition while others were saying, what's going on with you, Grundy? <laughs> he and I was already strengthening the bond. Like the that. bond that we did not necessarily have strengthened before he made his move. Like I'm encouraging somebody, when you step out, of, when one door closes, another door will open up. That's why you got to learn to speak to the situation and say, peace, be still. Amen. 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 Come on, put your blessed hands together and you can title that. Whatever you want to title that. Whatever you want to title that. Don't push me. I'm close to the head. Whatever you want to title that. Title that. Hashtag that. And we're going to give God the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. 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 Praise God. I'm talking to somebody right now that knows that you want to be a part of the kingdom of God. Amen. You never prayed the fair prayer of confession. You never came and was real about saying, Lord, come into my life. Take me as I am. I need you. They want you to know that if you need to pray the prayer of salvation, just reach out to us and we'll definitely pray that prayer with you. If you know you need to be at a church that'll push, that'll help you when you feel like you're close to the edge, I want you to know this is a wonderful body of believers. We're not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. If you would just type all in, we would warmly receive you as the next member, the new member here at the City of David. Just type all in. If you're hosting something online, type all in. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now that we have received something, we want to give something back to God. And we ask right now, you can give four ways here at the City of David. If you would write a check and mail it out to P.O. Uh, P. Box 485, Gardena, California, 90248, we will gladly receive that. Also, if you want to use Givenify, Choose our church with the logo, amen, and give whatever denomination God has given you on your heart. Yeah. If you want to give by Venmo, at City of David 2017, amen, and if you want to give by Cash App, dollar sign City of David 2017. Four ways in order for you to sow a seed that God may bless you above your wildest imaginations, amen. And I'm going to the point where I want to be the biggest tither at my church. Because I understand what that means in here. Amen. 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 Come on, we are ready to go to this house. I ask and solicit your prayers as I go and celebrate with Miracle Temple. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's stand all over this house. Tuesday is Bible study. Please reach out if you know that you need some vegetables. Amen. We all have it ready for you on Tuesday, but you got to reach out. You got to do your part because faith without works is dead. Amen. Amen. See you next Sunday. As we worship God for family and friends day. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. And to present us faultless with exceeding joy. To the only wise and true God we know be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now henceforth and forevermore. Let us say amen. Love you much. Have a wonderful and blessed day.